Yay! Now I'm just doing. Now this board's featuring the sub handle. Okay, because um, we call it a T Rex handle for anyone who's got little arms. So. Now I've got my helmet cam on or head cam. One of the videos I've got to do today is showing the router bit that I use to route the box out. Now, now I'm just cutting my paper. Right, so I've got 400, 800, and 1200. Now, um, this board is for Laurie, and it's only a couple of hours to polish. And then Laurie's going to come and pick it up. And if he picks it up today, he might go down for the early surf tomorrow, eh? Now, um, Carolyn came and did haircuts today. Um, thank Christ. I was a fucking big woolhead before. Kim got hers done. And uh, Louise and Kim's mum. And um, Kim got her dye put in. Um, she's 50 odd years of age, and the colours, the red's gone out of her hair. It happens more to the redhead straight away where they lose their colour once they have kids. Anyway, she's um, got the colour put back in. Looks absolutely beautiful. And yeah, she doesn't care less. She's like, I don't care. And look, I don't, but in a sense, but it looks so beautiful with, when it's done. I just absolutely, so that's me. I'm, I said to her, I'll be staring at her all day, just smiling and going. <laughs> but anyway, that's, now, first thing I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna knock the edge off this sup handle. And sometimes you just use a blade that and you just take the edge off I'll do that before I start sanding it And it just takes the sharp edge off it because when you sand it, it goes really sharp around the edge. And basically, someone's going to be carrying this, or Laurie's going to be carrying it, unless he's got a board carrier like in Bali. You know what I mean? So if he's got a. So you just knock the edge off. Just so it's nice and smooth under his hand. Because you've got to carry that for a long period of time, that's great, that's better. So just make sure that edge is softened dramatically. There we go, that's better. So when you rub your hand on it, it's not sharp. Now, and everyone has the option, if they want a sup handle, no worries, I can put it on there. Because some people carry their boards for, you know, it might be a... A long walk, like Mike has like a couple of mile walk when he goes to trestles, uppers. So when he, he carries it on his head, when he carries his 50s pig, and it weighs 16 kilos, so bloody heavy. So I'm 
just getting all this ready and then I will start wet and dry on the rail. Although the first thing I've got to do is I just knock the edge, knock a couple of lumps down. As I say, when, when you um, finish coat, sometimes you get a separation and I'm just checking if I dropped any resin on it anywhere. When I say drop, on purpose. So I'm just checking for any uppers. I think I had one on the nose here. Yep, one here. It's just where you fill the a, a separation. And you just get your pad and you just have it hard pad on slow. So on one and you just there we go. So that's that upper gone. And I think I had one on the bottom too. This one here, tiny little upper, and you just knock it with your hard pad down. Little one there, because the wet and dry won't take these down. So what you do is you use the machine. Where is it? Right there. There we go. And that makes it perfectly flat. Thought I had one on the nose here. No. That's spot on. Right out. now I go to the, the wet and drying. So I get rid of that little hard pad and I put my medium pad on. Apron. Now, I made these aprons myself. I got Kim's mum, um, she bought me one heaps ago, but you make these out of marine vinyl and they're like a halter neck thing, so it clamps on really easy. Hang on one second, I'm going to go. Just give me one sec. There's no quick way of doing this. It takes as long as it takes. Now because I um, didn't wipe my brush when I finished coated it, I know I've got 300 mils of resin on this board. Now what that means is, 
it won't buff through as easy as if I kept wiping my brush and only had 200 mils of resin on the board. It means the, the coat's thinner. So that's why never wipe your brush when you're doing a finish coat. And if someone says, yes you do, get them to explain why and how they replace the resin they've taken off. And how a finish coat with less resin on there is better than one with the full amount. So don't, don't take my word for it, just get them to explain their logic and you'll see which one's a bit, you know, crazy. It's always the slow part, this first part, but one of the most important, it's I'm going to do a new t-shirt up and and I'm thinking um, I'm, I'm sort of wanting to make it a bit of a bit of fun but you have all these different brands you see different brands and they say oh we're you know 50 years old or 60 years old and if you actually look into it, the name on the board, they don't actually make boards. They pay people to make them. And which always is a big thing for me because surfboards are like art. Okay, when Pablo Picasso died, or Van Gogh, or whoever, their art stopped. Okay? Um, you can register the name and create a business and all that sort of stuff, but. You can't buy a Van Gogh painting, a new one, custom. You know, it just won't happen ever. But these brands that keep on going and they don't even make it, I'm more for recognising surfboards as pieces of art as well. And I'm sort of thinking about doing a, a, a piss take. And I want a, a first gen, like Apple are the ones that sort of, you know, first gen iPod, second gen, third gen. I'm thinking of doing a first gen board maker um, shirt, you know, to show we're the ones, where that's our name, we're the only ones that make our boards and blah, blah, blah. Because um, our industry's full of the, you know, third or fourth or not even related gen making the boards, you know, and I sort of always wondered about that, like, um, if a label has built up a reputation, it is alright to keep going, but you have to draw a line, I think, somewhere on, on making sure it's a different product, in a sense, you know, because... It, it, it's hard because a lot of people won't feel that way. They'll be happy to have someone's uh, pretending someone else made their board when they didn't. You know what I mean? It happens a lot and I, I'm totally against it because once I found out most of the frauds who don't make boards and have names, um, they need board people to make their boards. and. I've always started feeling a bit like, hang on a minute, I'm making you look better than what you are, you know, and that's that's one thing that I think I'm going to do with this shirt. Something like it's first gen or it's no gen. You know, I want to do a piss take of, you know, sort of, if you built it, put your name on it, you know. I know there's a couple of brands and and um, but it's one thing like if you if you like you build up a reputation around a lot of things whether you're building houses or boats or racing cars or or whatever you know but for me I think if you spend your life building up your name 
that's what you've done. And I don't like sometimes, you know, there's nothing wrong with something stopping. You know, there's nothing wrong with um, someone's thing stopping. It, it happens with, as I say, it happens with art all the time. Otherwise, we'd have. Otherwise, they'd be selling new Picasso paintings now. There, there, there is a point where, as I say, you can't get Van Gogh paintings anymore off Van Gogh because he's dead. And I think when you water it down, if someone else made Van Gogh and sold them as Van Gogh, well, then the original Van Goghs aren't going to be, or Van Gogh, whatever you want to call him, aren't going to be worth as much, are they? Because the the label's been um, watered down to a point, I think. I'm just a great believer in if you've done the hard yards, that's it. The person that makes it, first gen, that's the hard yards. That's the there was none before that, you know what I mean? And, and But I know businesses become businesses where then the name becomes... But I think it should be recognised a bit different than the original, first gen. I don't know, that might be it. First gen or no gen. Yeah, it's either first gen or it's a, a bad copy, you know what I mean? Like some, something I'm going to do a shirt because I don't think you know it's going to go forever like one of the best lines from Matrix was uh, Mr. Smith when he says to Neo everything that has a beginning has an end Neo and that's it there's nothing wrong with that I mean um, we all hear it when our parents pass away, you know, or, or friends or whatever. Everything that has a beginning does have an end. It doesn't, otherwise, there's no room for the next one to come along. It, it's like, no, sure, you've got to have a memory, but I, I, I don't get that part of it. I know when when I go, that's it. There will be no more Peter surfboards. I don't want any more made. I don't want anyone making it in my name. The only person I want fucking making them is these two pair of hands. And that's the difference between some of the brands that you see. I see it on Instagram all the time and they're, they're pushing how old they are and all that sort of stuff. And most of them stopped making boards in the 60s. They paid other people to do it. And that's called checkbook board making. And that's something I can't stand. Because I've worked for checkbook board makers. And I'd never, ever do it again. Ever. Ever, 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 ever work for anyone as a check, you know. Checkwood board makers are like, Pfft. But anyway, that's just my point of view. A lot of people will disagree because they they like the idea of something dragging on and something that's not. So you can't. Each to their own, I suppose. But one thing they can't do is... See, the shirt I might do is first gen or every single board from start to finish, you know, made by one set of hands. And if you put that on a label, there's a lot that can't do it. There's a lot that can't put that on their label. So then you're knowing who's paying other people to do it. Yeah, so that's just something to, to think about, I suppose. 
And then some people say, oh, you're just saying that because you you only doing a small amount of boards. And I said, well, I got offered a lot of boards and I got offered to set up a factory in China and I got offered a lot of different things over the years, but I've knocked it all back. It's a case of... Um, you can't do something for someone if you don't look up to them. You know, I don't look up to a board maker that can't make boards. What the fuck's that? It's just something I, I believe quite strongly in. You know, it's um You know, it's So it's like anything, um, I suppose a good example is, is um, you know, some of the surfers, you know, they they can only go as long as they go and then that's it, their, their span is finished, which is nothing wrong with that, that's why we have history, you know, but um, I just find it hard to fathom the thing with surfboards where um, someone might like what what I'm talking about is when you're making boards irrespective of what stage you're at and you're in the building stage and you might be shaping 25 30 boards a week or 40 <coughs> and you do that for years what happens is you end up with some pr pretty serious fucked up injuries to your back and shoulders and RSI and all sorts of things. Some people get carpal tunnel. Um, I've known a lot of board makers that have had a lot of bad RSI injuries because of what they've done. It's sort of like earning your stripes to a point. When someone comes in to something already built and hasn't earned that, that's that's the part I think might grate with some people, you know? Um, and a good example of that is nepotism. Like, News Corp, Rupert Murdoch hired his son and um, gave him the Australia and Asia of News Corp and the fucking shares went down because it was all nepotism. He shouldn't have got it. He wasn't qualified. There were more qualified people. Yeah, nepotism never works. Especially if they're unskilled. Especially when there's other people that work their whole life getting to do everything and then they just get someone in just because they're their son. So, but, I don't know. Some people might feel differently about it. You know, but I'm a great believer in you don't live through your fucking kids and you don't live through your parents. You live through your own life in that sense. You can be proud of your kids, but my mum and dad, my mum's passed away, but my dad's gone, but my dad was a master dyer, and um, he was absolutely hopeless of his hands, okay? He, he, he was just hopeless. I must have got it off my, my mum, but anyway, my dad had his own things, you know? He's highly qualified in his field, 
and my mum was qualified in what she did, but it had nothing to do with what I built with surfboards. And they didn't live through me in um, things I do, and I don't live through them by relying on them for my name dropping or anything like that. I, I, my parents had their life, I'll have mine, and that's how it works. You know, you move on. Um, but I know some go on and, yeah, you can remember your parents and things like that, but you don't take on things they've done when you haven't done it. That, that's probably more so what I'm getting at. Build your own life. And if, you know, if your parents worked their asses off and sacrificed and did all this stuff, don't claim to be them that you are fucking worked your ass off when you haven't and sacrificed, you know? That, that's what I get at because I hate when these people say, oh yeah, I'm a blah, 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 and they didn't, haven't done half the work their fucking parents did. You know, like um, making boards or whatever. You know, it, it, it's... There's a lot of it around now, that's all. And with our with our new um, social media, they just play on it big time. Absolutely play. That's why I do these videos, so people can see I do every board. No one else comes in and does it. It's transparent, shape, glass, clean the factory floor, do the whole lot. Because of the checkwood board makers out there, I want people to know they get a board off me, I do the whole lot. I don't pay someone to glass it because I can't glass. I don't get anyone else to tape up the rail lines or do anything. And I think I might start the first gen club up or something where you're only allowed in there if you can do everything and it's your business and you built it. Because there'd be a lot of people that wouldn't get in it. Hell of a lot. But that's alright. I know a lot of people mightn't even worry about stuff like that. And just go straight over their head what I'm talking about. But if you've ever built anything, built a label, the amount of sleepless nights and what else? The amount of work that goes into building a label and sacrifice, going without, working 20 hours in a day, or doing, you know, the times when you had to get something done, or you fucking didn't have your mortgage payment. You know, like there is so much involved in building a label up. And I think sometimes I know a couple of people that have. Where, where locally they've been given stuff and it's, it's just I've fucking worked for every single thing I've gotten and I've known people that have oh mate, don't, I won't start on them but put it this way, they haven't earned what they've got there's a big difference between handing everything and, and working for it but I suppose that's more a generational thing I'm 58 We, our generation took a lot of pride in in working for what they have, ownership of it. But yeah, I, I'm, I'm against that whole thing with the with the um, not building it yourself. Start your own. A good example. There's a guy, American guy. I remember. Um, American shaper Richie Collins. Now Richie Collins, um, I met him a couple of times in the 80s when he came over here anyway um, to surface and stuff, but he, his dad had weight, Lance Collins had a thing called wave tools. Now um, Richie Collins made great boards and he'd done his own label. I think they were called, oh, what is it when you're undercover? Um, Covert or Contra. They were called, I think it was called Contra. Now, he had his own label. He built his own um, 
brand and who he is and everything. And um, got a lot of respect for that. He could have just done the wave tool thing and just rode on his dad's coattails, but he didn't, you know? Mind you, I, only met, I met him like years ago. I'm talking 1985 or 86. It's a long time ago. But I got a lot of respect for that. Because his dad's brand, Wave, to Wave Tools, is absolutely massive. Like, fantastic boards. Um, I don't know a lot about him, but he had the most awesome sprays and a lot of colour and, you know, he could make everything. Obviously, a lot of the Californians will know a lot about his history and stuff. I don't. I just know that he built his own empire, so to speak, and so did Richie Collins. He, he did his own. That's what I'm probably more getting at. Yeah, I think it's more that I'm talking about. He's, he's probably a good example. I don't know how he's going now with his label and stuff or, or whatever, but I knew he did his own. And I know he was quite a, quite a big personality, you know. Maybe he wanted to make it on his own in that sense. But um, great that he did. Definitely got a lot of respect for him doing it that way. It's a different thing. If you sold your name and then someone else has got it and then you go and work for them, that's a totally different thing. Then it's just then it's just a business, you know? Um, to that point, you know. But uh, yeah, so that's that's what I'm getting at with that one. I did four passes with the 400. Two more passes with the 400, then I go to the 800.
slow and steady. I know this part is boring. Now Laurie will be probably, I imagine, picking this up the Sabo. I've still got a fair bit of time left on it, but hopefully you'll see the live need and get excited. But you'll see that it's slow, two hours work at least. Two hours work at least, there's no there's no going any quicker. Right, so that's the four hundred. Okay, get rid of that, get the glue on my head. Now comes the 800. The spray glue, 3M77. There we go. Now comes the four passes with the 800.
Now, the slower you do this, the faster you do the polish job. I know people hear that and they go, what? But it is true. The more you rush this, the longer it takes to buff. So you've got to slow yourself down. Give the, give the wet and dry a chance to cut back. I have to force myself to slow down. And don't worry, it is boring. Two more passes with the 800, then 1200. But I'm going to go and have a cuppa after I do these two passes. And I'll be back in like 20 minutes. The problem with this part is you can't see anything. So you're doing something and you don't see a result. The only time you see a result is when you put a bit of polish on it and start buffing up on the lamb floor. And when it comes up straight away shiny with no scratches, that's when you see the result. It's like a delayed, a delayed um, result. But if you do this fast, oh boy, you see it when you're polishing. You'll have scratches all through it, and more than likely you have to recut it back. And this is the part I'm talking about with some of those labels that just shape and get them off the glass and factories when their dad or whatever did the whole lot, you know what I mean? Like, you have no idea the injuries you get in your shoulders and lower back polishing. Um, yeah, and they claim to be all this and...
Right up. So I'm just going to take that off. Now I'm going to turn the GoPro off. Bear with me for a second. I'll turn this one off first. See you later.